χάραμα στον σταθμό των Καλαβρίτων. Μέσα στο μηχανοστάσιο, τρει συνταξιούχοι σιδηροδρομικοί πιάνουν ξανά δουλειά. Σκοπό του η συντήρηση τη μοναδική λειτουργική ατμάμαξα του οδοντοτού σιδηροδρόμου και τη τελευταία σε ολόκληρη τη χώρα. Λοιπόν, το προχωρά. Σιγά σιγά. Η διαδικασία θα διαρκέσει περίπου 5 ώρε μέχρι η μηχανή να μπορεί να κινηθεί. Παρά το γεγονός ότι η ατμάμαξα είναι σε κατάσταση λειτουργίας, οι κανονισμοί δεν επιτρέπουν να κινηθεί εκτός του χώρου του μηχανοστασίου. Ένας θησαυρό που παραμένει ανεκμετάλλευτος. Λίγα χιλιόμετρα δυτικά του Βόλου, μία ομάδα εθελοντών κρατά ζωντανό ένα μικρό τμήμα γραμμής. Το δίκτυο αυτό κατασκευάστηκε τη δεκαετία του 1880 και έκλεισε το 1998. Έκτοτε το τμήμα Βελεστίνο Ερινό, μήκους 11 χιλιόμετρων, αποτελεί τον τόπο δράσης τους. Σε σταθερή μηνιαία βάση ταξιδεύουν από διάφορα μέρη της χώρας για να συνεχίσουν την προσπάθεια διάσωσης. Εκτελούν εργασίες συντήρησης γραμμής, ακριβώς όπως γινόταν από τα συνεργεία του ΟΣΕ όταν λειτουργούσε το δίκτυο. Η ομάδα απαρτίζεται από ελάχιστα μέλη, ενώ η τοπική κοινωνία είναι κυρίως ουδέτερη απέναντι στην όλη προσπάθεια. Αυτοί όμως συνεχίζουν. Ο αγώνας έχει ακόμα δρόμο. Πώς λοιπόν θα μπορούσε να ευδοκιμήσει στην Ελλάδα ένας μουσιακός σιδηρόδρομος, η απάντηση έρχεται από τη Βόρεια Ευρώπη. Το Ηνωμένο Βασίλειο διαθέτει ένα από τα μεγαλύτερα και καλύτερα οργανωμένα δίκτυα του πλανήτη, μεταφέροντας εκατομμύρια επιβάτες και εμπορεύματα καθημερινά. Αν και οι εταιρείες που τρέχουν στο δίκτυο είναι πλέον ιδιωτικέ, η υποδομή και οι εγκαταστάσεις, καθώς και η κυκλοφορία των σύρμων, υπάγεται στον κρατικό φορέα, την Network Rail. Στο Ηνωμένο Βασίλειο όμως, δεν συναντάμε μόνο σύγχρονα τρένα υψηλών ταχυτήτων, αλλά και ζωντανή ιστορία. Για το λόγο αυτό ταξιδέψαμε ως το North Norfolk Railway, μια γραμμή 8 χιλιόμετρων που ενώνει το Sheringham με το Holt. Επιβιβαζόμαστε σε μια διατηρητέα αυτοκινητάμαξα για μια πρώτη περιήγηση στη γραμμή. Σκοπός μας να συναντηθούμε με ένα από τα παλαιότερα μέλη της κοινότητας του μουσιακού σιδηροδρόμου για να μας εξηγήσει πώς λειτουργούν τα ιστορικά δίκτυα εδώ. The railway, a railway is a living museum because you can actually travel on it um, in coaches uh, and behind locomotives that used to actually run on that line. Some like-minded people wanted to make sure that that in the future people could see what those railways were like. I think everybody needs to know where the routes came from, what, what they've got today, how it got there. So if you've got, uh, maybe in Greece, superb electric locomotives running on high speed lines, you really need to know how they got there. That somewhere it started with a little steam engine pulling two coaches. Well, it, it's not just about railways. I mean, we've, we've got um, uh, people like myself, that preserve old cars. Uh, so you, you, you get the motor industry from its birth right to, say, 20 years ago. 
So again, you can see how the motor car developed. With the, with the railways, you can see how the railways developed. And all the, the, the different railways in the country, some operate different periods. Uh, some go way back to like Victorian times. Uh, for instance, Beamish uh, up in County Durham. Uh, others are quite modern and run diesels. Um, ours is a bit of a mixture here. Uh, we run steam and diesel, but people can go and see what it was like to travel here in the 50s, the 1950s. The network itself, the Midland Great Northern, uh, was a, a joint railway, as it, as it says, a joint railway between the Midland Railway and the Great Northern Railway. It ran until 1959, when it was considered unprofitable, and so the entire line closed overnight. Immediately, the society was formed. They started running trains just for their own members. And then they got what we call a light railway order, which gave them the permission then from Parliament to run passenger trains with paying passengers. And we recruited members. This is back in the 1959, this was, when the line first closed. And after a period of around eight years, there was enough money from subscriptions and uh, they ran special trains around the country uh, to raise money to buy the track and rent the station. So the, the society started, was at the beginning to start it all. Since then, we, we've sort of diverged a bit. Uh, the society doesn't really want to run a railway, so we let the PLC run the railway, whereas we supply them with locomotives, uh, rolling stock, we have our museum, um, and we support them financially. The train that now standing in platform 10 is the final... A few years back, there was a boiler firm down in Chatham in Kent um, that they wanted to sell, uh, the, the, the owner wanted to sell it, and we bought it and brought the whole lot up to Wayboard, built a purpose-built boiler shop for it, and now they do business not only just for our own locos, but they do outside business as well. They've got locos in from Belgium, France, Holland, Germany, uh, and, and they do that as a, as a, a profitable business, do you know what I mean? Not, it's purely, we, we do boilers. Uh, most of the volunteers then were trained by British Railways employees. So if you want to be, learn to be a fireman, the British Railways uh, fireman will come and teach you how to be a fireman and their inspectors would pass you out as uh, suitable, as qualified. So that's, why, that's where it all started. Uh, as we got more experience, uh, we, had a, we were able to have our own inspectors to, you know, to, to train and test the staff. The first, first train ran in 1977, so you see it was 18 years be between forming the society and getting the trains running. I mean, we started here with one engine and two coaches back in 1977, until you know, to what you see now. Uh, and it is the, the enthusiasm of people. And it's not just the older generation, we've got youngsters on this railway in the teens and early 20s. We've got accountants, solicitors, bus drivers, um, retired people, um, youngsters at college. Uh, so they come from all walks of life and they are all ages. We've got our young, we have a young volunteers um, club, which takes uh, youngsters from 11 to 16 uh, and hopefully prepares them then when they're 16 to come and actually volunteer on the railway itself. I was a guard on a train one day and it rather upset me that the driver and the fireman's ages added together didn't equal mind. Uh, they were both in their early 20s uh, and, and driving and firing a steam, steam engine. Με όσα μας λέει ο Νίλ, καταλαβαίνουμε πως η μεταλαμπάδευση των γνώσεων σε νέους ανθρώπους είναι ένας από τους σημαντικότερους παράγοντες διατήρησης αυτών των δικτύων. 
Στην Ελλάδα όμως, η κατάσταση είναι τελείως διαφορετική. Η ομάδα της Θεσσαλίας διαθέτει μία αυτοκινητάμαξα του 1937. Οι μόνοι όμως που μπορούν να την κινούν είναι οι συνταξιούχοι μηχανοδηγοί του Βόλου. Από αυτούς, μόνον ένας συνεργάζεται με το μουσιακό σιδηρόδρομο. Όλες οι κινήσεις του σειρμού εξαρτώνται από τη διάθεση, το χρόνο και την ύπαρξη ενός και μόνον ανθρώπου. Δεν είναι δική του η ευθύνη όμως. Αντιθέτως, χάρη σε αυτόν, έστω και σπάνια, κατόρθωναν να κινούν το σειρμό έως την καθήλωσή του από βλάβη το 2013. Uh, they are mainly local, yes, because of getting here. You know, when, when you're 12 years old, you've got to rely on mum or dad to, uh, to bring you along. So they're mainly with, within a uh, sort of 15 mile uh, radius of, of, of Sheringham. We're a holiday town here. Obviously we're on holiday, it's a quite a treat for them to travel behind a steam locomotive because there hasn't been any steam locomotives on the national network since 1968. The children love it because they've ne they've, some of them have never been on a train, let alone a steam train. Um, and we get some extremely good write-ups on TripAdvisor, places like that, that people have been and said, yeah, we had a great time. Uh, we try and be very friendly with them, we try and give them a good day out. It's not just a train ride, it's a whole day out um, you know, on the railway. Uh, we have events for the children as well, we've got Peppa Pig event coming up, I don't know whether you have Peppa Pig in, in Greece, but Yeah, we've got a Peppa Pig event coming up. Uh, Thomas the Tank Engine uh, for the children. Um, and also we have special event. I'm doing an interview, be quiet. Yeah, we also have special events for, for adults as well, like 1940s weekend. We have a vintage transport weekend where there's displays of old cars, buses, again, historical. He stopped. <laughs> <laughs> the main reason they come is because of what it is, not how it got here. Um, Yes, we do try and explain to them in the museum, look, you know, this, this was a very big railway in its day and it went all the way from Leicestershire uh, right down to Great Yarmouth. They'll say, well, it's very nice, but they want to ride on the bit that's left. So it is actually uh, the railway that we've got now that, that brings them here rather than what, what it was. It's live steam, living history. It's here, people in the UK have got this love of steam railways. So your average man in the street will just come here because it's here and because it's a steam railway. Uh, also, we have enthusiasts. They will come, especially, say, to Gala, when we've hired in another locomotive. Say, I don't know, um, well, anything special. But, but, but for instance, fly, if we've got Flying Scotsman here, That, that you won't be able to move on the railway for the weekend because all the enthusiasts will come to see it, or Tornado. Pe pe people come there to walk the park and then we'll catch the train back to Sheringham. Or they'll, they'll catch the train to Weybourne, walk the park and then get the train back again. Uh, they, use the, they use the train as transport. Local people can get a pass uh, which gives them, I think it's 50% off the fare. So if you live in Holt, you get this pass which gives you half fare and you can come down to Sheringham to do your shopping. Um, so using the train as transport rather than a heritage railway. Uh, in fact, there are several railways, that, uh, heritage railways around the country, which people use for transport. 
especially in places where they're hard to get out in the car or, or on a bus. It, it doesn't happen overnight, Un unless you've got a very generous benefactor that, that will give you 100 million euros to start you off. So it, it's a question of getting, those, getting the enthusiasm from the people that want to do it. It's, there's got to be the will there to do it. Um, uh, if, if, if you've got the will to do it, it will happen. Στο μεταξύ στα Καλάβρητα, η Δέλτα K8001 είναι έτοιμη να κινηθεί. Την ημέρα αυτή, με πρωτοβουλία του Συλλόγου Φίλων του Σιδηροδρόμου της Αθήνας, όσα μέλη επιθυμούν θα έχουν την ευκαιρία να μάθουν κάποιες βασικές πληροφορίες για τον τρόπο προετοιμασίας και λειτουργίας της Ατμάμαξας. Μια σημαντική αφετηρία, η οποία όμως δεν μπορεί να λάβει διαστάσεις, έτσι ώστε να μπορούν να λειτουργήσουν ένα σιδηροδρομικό δίκτυο. Χρειάζεται θεωρητική εκπαίδευση και πολλές ώρες πρακτικής εργασίας σε όλα τα επίπεδα. Αυτή τι είναι, αντιλία λαδιού. Αυτή είναι, αντιλία ναι. Επιπλέον, το νομοθετικό πλαίσιο γύρω από τη δυνατότητα πιστοποίησης του τροχαίου υλικού που συντηρείται ή επισκευάζεται από εθελοντές, χρήζει εξίσου ριζικών τροποποιήσεων. Σίγουρα δεν είναι μια απλή υπόθεση και αδιαμφισβήτητα δεν πρόκειται να αλλάξει μέσα σε ένα βράδυ. Πώς λοιπόν θα μπορούσαν να κινηθούν οι Έλληνες φίλοι του σιδηροδρόμου? And European coaches, but still, people still go. People will come to something that's different. If all you've got out there is like we've got on our main line, electric locomotives and DMUs, and you're saying, oh, we've got this haul service, uh, we've got two trains running, one's a diesel, one's a steam, with older coaches, people will come. What you need to, what you need to do, Alex, is to get the local people on your side before you start. So if you're thinking to restore this piece of what is now um, disused railway, don't go in there as the, as the Athens boys and we're going to tell you what we're going to do. Uh, go in there and say, look, this is what we'd like to do. We need your help. Explain to them what you're trying to do and explain to them more importantly what it's going to do for them. There's, we have a saying in the UK, for selling things, you sell the sizzle, not the sausage. You don't sell the railway itself, you sell what the benefits of the railway are to the local community. It's not just give us some money and we'll see what we're going to do with it. You give them a project. Right, we want to reopen this station. What we need to do is have a refreshment room, a ticket office, you know, a car park, and this is what we're going to do. And this is going to cost 300,000 euros. I mean, do you have a, a lot? Do you have a national lottery in Greece? Mm -hmm. Nas Once you've got yourself established, go to the national lottery and say, "Look, this is what we're trying to do. Present the case uh, uh, for the reopening." And if you can then go to your local people on this line and say, "Look, we've got national lottery interest in this. They'll provide us with, oh, I don't know, hundred thousand euros to start us off. You know, what can you do to help us? Not give us money, but give us labour. You know, come and." Uh, on your days off, come and give us a hand. You know, uh, you know, to check the sleepers, to oil the points, to you know, make sure the signals are all working. But more importantly, you've got to get National Rail on your side to say that you can run these trains by yourself without their interference. And that while, uh, while they will probably train your initial volunteers up who are safety critical, like drivers, guards, signalmen, um, people like that, that once they're trained, that they can then train others. If they've got a certificate from National Rail, say that I'm, a, I'm now a qualified diesel driver with National Rail, um, 
and then they, they can then train up well, you, you me uh, uh, to, to do the same job and be able to sign our bit of paper to say that we know what we're doing but you must be able to do it independently if you've got the national rail saying yes you can do it but only with our drivers and guards and signalmen uh, you, you are fighting losing battle Σήμερα οι περιορισμοί που ισχύουν γενικά στην Ελλάδα δεν δημιουργούν κίνητρα για να τεθούν οι βάσεις τέτοιων μουσιακών δικτύων. Η ΔΚ 8001, κατασκευασμένη το 1891, βρισκόταν σε απόθεση ως το 2013. Δύο χρόνια αργότερα κινήθηκε αυτοδύναμη μετά από πολιετή εγκατάλειψη. Συμμετείχε στους εορτασμούς των 120 χρόνων του Δοντοτού το 2016 και έκτοτε κλείστηκε ξανά στο κτίριο. Go and have a word with the transport committee and say, look, we want a special license to run this. Say, like they do in the UK, at 25 miles an hour. You know, with our own staff. You know, that we can be passed out by... Greek national rail uh, officials to to do this, which is the same as we started. We had British Railways officials pass out our first drivers, guards and signalmen. You can quote the UK. You say, look, in the UK, this is what they do. We want to do the same. And you can quote the North Norfolk Railway and say, look, we've been, we were now, we're associated with the North Norfolk Railway through the locomotive they've got, which is an old, you know, ex, ex Greek Railways. And we've seen the way they run. They run it extremely safely, without any interference from national, the national rail. So, uh, really, the Greek transport department have got no excuse for saying, "Oh well, you can't do this because because it's it's done here, it's done in Germany, it's done in France, it's done in Belgium." A lot of hard work. By the time you're ready to retire, you might be running trains. Και ενώ στον υπόλοιπο κόσμο συνεχίζουν τη δυναμική τους δράση, εμείς αντιθέτως επιλέγουμε να εμένουμε σε ένα ανούσιο παιχνίδι ευθυνών και θεωρίας, ενώ το ιστορικό τροχαίο υλικό μας πλησιάζει στο χείλος της Αβύσου. Καθημερινά, ένα κομμάτι της σύγχρονης ιστορίας μας χάνεται. Το Ηνωμένο Βασίλειο δίνει ένα λαμπρό παράδειγμα. Δεν ήταν θεοί, ούτε ζούσαν σε μια ουτοπία. Ήταν άνθρωποι καθημερινοί, που με σκληρή προσπάθεια και υπομονή κατάφεραν να κάνουν το αδύνατο δυνατό. Είναι λοιπόν όσα λέει ο Νίλ εφικτά να γίνουν στην Ελλάδα. Με σοβαρό και μακρόπνοο σχεδιασμό, σκληρή δουλειά, θέληση και υπομονή, φυσικά και είναι εφικτά. Ελπίδα και λαμπρό παράδειγμα έδωσε η πρωτοβουλία κατοίκων της ευρύτερης περιοχής του Μπράλου. Το 2018 η γραμμή του Θορέας Λενοκλαδίου έκλεισε και από τότε τα τρένα ακολουθούν νέα χάραξη. Οι κάτοικοι έμειναν χωρίς συγκοινωνία. Δεν άρχισαν ωστόσο να οργανωθούν και με την καθοδήγηση του εκπολιτιστικού συλλόγου Μπράλου διαμαρτυρήθηκαν, αγωνίστηκαν και πίεσαν φορείς και πολιτεία. Ο αγώνας τους δικαιώθηκε και το τρένο επανήλθε στην υπηρεσία των κατοίκων. Στη ζωή πρέπει να διεκδικείς, να μάχεσαι και να κερδίζεις όσα θες. Όσα μας εξήγησε ο Νίλ δεν τους προσφέρθηκαν εν μία νυχτή, αλλά τα διεκδίκησαν με σκληρή προσπάθεια. Ωστόσο, ο χρόνος πιέζει και η φθορά της βιομηχανικής μας κληρονομιάς κρούει τον κόδωνα του κινδύνου. Πρέπει να δράσουμε και πρέπει να δράσουμε τώρα, πριν να είναι πολύ αργά. Το σήμερα είμαστε εμείς και εμείς μόνον είμαστε υπεύθυνοι για το ποιο θα είναι το αύριο.